The numbers don't lie. Public transit is booming in Virginia. Amtrak Virginia's ridership climbed to over 1.4 million in fiscal year 2025, up 4.8% from last year. With infrastructure upgrades now essential, what's being done to keep pace? That's what we're exploring in today's Great Train Speed. This is the gateway between Virginia and Washington, D.C., and it's being rebuilt not as a simple replacement, but as a multimodal corridor with a new Potomac River rail bridge paired with a parallel bicycle-pedestrian bridge, plus a sequence of connecting structures and landings that thread through East and West Potomac parks and back into the district's street grid. For over a century, a two-track span has carried everything, Amtrak, VRE, and CSX at or near capacity. With ridership growth on the passenger side and sustained freight needs, there's no more slack. The project is organized into two major construction packages. On the district side, the Long Bridge North package, budgeted at around $1.6 billion, began early works in April 2025. Crews have already removed out-of-service track to clear the way for new alignments. They've completed demonstration drilled shafts and micropiles, Traffic has been shifted, and the 14th Street access ramp at Main Avenue Southwest is closed, opening a tight urban work zone so bridge and utility activities can proceed safely. Current efforts focus on reinforcing the crash walls that safeguard the bridge piers. Work on crash walls D and F is almost finished, while upgrades to crash wall C will extend into 2026. After the Long Bridge project is completed, train tracks will be relocated closer to the piers, making it necessary to further strengthen the crash walls that protect the piers supporting the Maryland Avenue overhead. Selective tree clearing in East Potomac Park is also underway to make room for construction areas and upcoming project work. South of the river, the Long Bridge South package carries a $1 billion budget and focuses on the invisible backbone with subsurface knowledge and structural integration. Survey crews have mapped utilities and alignments. Monitoring devices are on existing structures to track movement as construction ramps and geotechnical borings have been drilled in the Potomac River to characterize the soils that will carry piers and abutments. Right now, the team is deep in scope validation and coordination. Permitting for test piles and riverbed investigations is underway. Once approved, the test pile program begins, giving engineers real data on capacity and depth. In parallel, marine bulkhead construction will start. It helps to picture the corridor from the George Washington Memorial Parkway northward. First, the twin structures, a new Potomac River rail bridge and a bicycle pedestrian bridge, both launching over the parkway and the river to separate flows and relieve pressure on legacy infrastructure. Mid-river, you pick up additional spans and retaining walls as the alignment threads through east and west Potomac parks. There, reconstructing the Metro Y395 Bridge, the Ohio Drive Southwest Bridge, and the Washington Channel Rail Bridge is part of the plan, along with landscape design that knits the engineering into parkland rather than letting it feel like an intrusion. Finally, near Main Avenue Southwest, the project lands with a new rail bridge, fresh retaining walls, and a pedestrian bridge that tightens urban access near the waterfront. For daily riders, that means a corridor built for throughput and resilience. For cyclists and pedestrians, it's a long missing cross river link that turns a rail choke point into a genuine multimodal asset. Beginning January 2026, construction at the Long Bridge will run on recurring five hour daily outages for as long as five years. Washington DC's noise and vibration rules restrict major activity to the day and VRE's peaks in the morning and evening slice those days into even smaller workable blocks. Add the Northeast Corridor's pulse to and from Washington Union Station, and the midday window becomes the only logical slot for heavy work. The plan is to wring every minute of productivity out of those windows while using long bridge outages to synchronize other corridor improvements. Even with careful scheduling, you'll feel it. Expect impacts to Amtrak Virginia services select Amtrak long-distance trains, the Carolinian, and VREs, Fredericksburg, and Manassas lines. The guiding principle is clear. Keep the railroad moving, even if slower at times, 
while building the capacity that will make tomorrow's schedules both faster and more reliable. If the Long Bridge project clears the river, the Alexandria 4th track clears the approach. From the southern end of the Long Bridge project beside the Long Bridge Aquatic Center, down to just west of Alexandria Union Station, the Alexandria 4th track project adds one new main track to a corridor that already carries Amtrak, Virginia Railway Express, and CSX. On paper, it's a simple addition. On the ground, it's the key to unlocking a chronic choke point where three VRE Fredericksburg line tracks and two Manassas line tracks funnel into just three, forcing passenger and freight to share too little capacity at the worst possible place. Trains stack up, schedules slip, and a delay here ripples straight into Arlington and across the Potomac toward Washington, D.C. The solution is straightforward. Shift the existing tracks within the current right-of-way, add a fourth, and separate movements so that freight and passenger services stop stepping on each other's toes. Removing the bottleneck creates headroom for more Amtrak Virginia trains, steadier VRE peaks, and cleaner freight paths. Exactly the mix of passengers needed when demand rises and supply chains still depend on rail. The design is intentionally coordinated with upcoming VRE platform upgrades at Alexandria and Crystal City, plus a new Amtrak platform planned for Crystal City. Now, how are they doing on cost and schedule? The project's budget, first set at $210.5 million about five years ago when design was around 30%, has been refreshed to a proposed $238.4 million. That's not scope creep, it's maturity, as designs sharpen, quantities get real, and constraints show up in black and white. Bid-informed ranges tell the same story, a low estimate at $230 million, a high at $252 million. Add boundary surveys that expanded the right-of-way acquisition program to 31 parcels, and in urban rail, parcels mean time and dollars, and there's no shortcut. Layer on the choreography of building around live railroad operations and adjacent projects. Construction phasing that protects current service inevitably carries complexity. Finally, market feedback mattered when CSX issued the invitation for bids on June 26th, and four bids arrived on August 28th, giving planners real prices to calibrate against. The procurement cadence is crisp and frankly impressive for a corridor this busy. Right-of-way acquisitions kicked off in May. The IFB went out in June. Bids landed in August. Cost evaluations wrapped on September 9th. VPRA's final budget review followed on September 16th. The project update is planned for October 7th to clarify the scope, responsibilities, and funding. The contractor execution date is slated for November 4th, with bid pricing valid through November 24th to keep decisions inside the procurement window. So, how does this tie back to the Long Bridge project? Think of the two projects as a single system. The Long Bridge is the gateway across the Potomac. The Alexandria 4th track is the approach that feeds it. When the four-track segment through Arlington and Alexandria comes online, dispatchers get the flexibility to stage and route trains cleanly into the bridgehead. When the bridge adds new capacity across the river, Virginia gains the headroom to run near-hourly Amtrak frequencies to Richmond without constantly tripping over freight or pinching commuter peaks. So, here's your quick viewer question. Will these projects finally end the bottleneck and improve rail service? Drop a one if you think this is the fix the corridor needed, and a zero if you think more is still required downstream. Your take shapes what we cover next. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.